Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible and you know why I've been saying that because I love you guys or whenever you happen to be watching. You know, I tell you what, I'm just kind of checking out a few things and I need your help on a couple things to be honest with you. And uh, it's not about Ben and Jerry. I just saw him and I thought it was too cool to not at least pull him out. I actually am trying to figure out a new animal to add to the Reptarium and I'm kind of at a loss right now. So maybe you guys can help me out with this because you know, obviously we have so many amazing animals. I mean, look at the basilisks hanging out up here. They look amazing. And every time I come in here, I'm always just blown away. Look at this emerald tree ball right now. I mean, that thing, look at it's after, just after it missed. It's got all the little water droplets on it. I mean, that is just absolutely crazy. Beetlejuice up here. I mean, I, I, okay, I'm getting distracted. My point is, is that it is hard when you walk around the road here to not be distracted because they're such amazing animals. The point is, is that this enclosure right here, guess who used to be in this? That's right. Perdita. This was Perdita's enclosure for two, almost two and a half years. Now she has that new beautiful enclosure that we're so excited about. But I'm trying to think, what do I do with this enclosure? It's kind of a tricky one. You know, Perdita liked it. There was no doubt it was really good for her. But I don't know that I want another snake. I look at this as a lizard enclosure because there's terracing, right? Terracing, terracing, hot spot. You know, to me, a lizard would be perfect in here. But I don't know what to do. You know, should we do another monitor? Should we do like a group of like, you know, remember I've been talking about about those collared lizards. I really, by the way, if anyone knows those powder blue or what they call blueberry collared lizards, I want to get a group of them. Would it be cool to have them in there? I'm not 100% sure. They are a desert animal. It could work possibly, but you know, it's, it's rare that I get stumped where I'm like, I look at an enclosure and I just don't know what to do with it, right? And this is a kind of an, uh, an important area because obviously we've got snaz over here. We've got Verde on this side. We've got the alligators. And when Perdita was here, this was a super popular area for people to kind of connect Bean, right now with this cage empty uh, it's not as busy over here so I need something that's really gonna attract people over here so I need your help I need a new animal what should I put in this enclosure I don't know yet you know so I figure I'd come to you guys and have uh, you guys help me out in this uh, so hit me up in the comments let me know what you think and let's let's come up with a banger just a quick check up in the colubrid room things are still in brumation I turn the lights on just to kind of come in and see how things are going in here because uh, it's important you know we check on them almost every day and stuff like that but uh, we're just literally like 10 days away from bringing things out of brumation and actually ironically enough someone's been asking to see Everglades rat snakes which are right here and of course I said that they're in brumation so there you are whoever that was here's an Everglades rat snake looking good and you can see that you know the snakes will still be awake during brumation right it's not like they're uh, going to sleep and you can't even move them I mean they're still aware they'll still move around it's just they're very cold it's about 60 degrees down here right now and we actually keep it dark and what basically is gonna happen by the way this is a T positive albino Nelson's milk snake that looks just absolutely stunning and everything looks really good you know that was the thing that I wanted to make sure moving into a new environment first time we brumated in this room I want to make sure that the animals themselves didn't look thin they don't look stressed out I mean, look at this beautiful apricot Pueblin milk snake. I mean, what an absolute ripper that thing is. Again, nice body weight seem to be fine they're not moving around one of the things that if you're just looking down an aisle like this when they're in brumation if you start to see anything moving around that's a bad sign you want them to be dormant now when I actually open up a tub like this again you can see tongue response it's completely aware that I'm here its tongue is going to be a little slower obviously because of course it's in a cool down situation but you want them to be alert but you don't want them to be moving around because if they're moving around, that means that they're gonna actually be burning calories, right? So basically, I just wanna come down, take a look at everything, get an idea of where we're at when it comes to, you know, the next 10 days and these guys are gonna be up and that's when things really start going of course this is a coral ghost corn snake again all of the animals look like they did really well great body weight all that type of stuff of course we have scaleless corn snakes right here and again like I mentioned you can see they're moving around and stuff like that I'm not gonna mess with them too much because obviously it's not a good situation but they are gonna get ready to come up and basically what will happen is right now we have that fan that is sucking cold air from outside to cool this place off we're gonna basically shut that off obviously turn the heat on get the heat just going up just a little bit over a seven or ten day period we'll bring it from the 60s up to maybe the upper 70s or lower 80s a black and white a barren cow king and it's interesting to feel a snake 
that's cold, you know, because that's just not weird. You know, typically when you're feeling a snake, it's nice and warm. And it's weird when you touch these snakes, they're actually cold to the touch because, again, they're ectothermic, right? So if it's 60 degrees in here, they're 60 degrees. They can't regulate their body temperature. So once they actually get up to that upper 70s, lower 80s over a 7 or 10 day period, we'll actually do the first feeding. And then the next feeding, we start really ramping up and we start feeding, 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 feeding. They're going to go through a shed out of hibernation. It's called a post hibernation shed. That is when they start to develop follicles and that's when we're going to breed them now the next shed typically is a pre-lay shed so it happens really quick and then eggs are seven to ten days later so uh couldn't be more happy with the way things look down here but oh gosh look at this by the way gray banded king snake oh i am so excited to be able to actually breed gray banded king snakes this year and they look absolutely ridiculous i am so excited so guys it's about to heat up i know that the winter has been a long winter haven't had as much content when it comes to cool stuff like eggs and babies but it is on the way so i am getting more excited every single day so guys, guess what? Valentine's is coming up. You may know that. It's February 14th, and if you have a significant other or want a significant other, and you don't get them something, you're probably not going to have a significant other for very long. I've got a good solution for you guys. Down in the description, you can click on the link, and there's actually really cool, customizable Reptarium cards that you can send that person that is going to absolutely love it. You can get them in color. You can get them in black and white. You can email them, print them out, whatever you happen to want to do. Color them yourself, whatever. I think you'll really like it. Again, link in the description. It's only $4. $0.99. Remember a couple weeks ago when we actually had to assist feed some of the boega, including this little Gemacincta? Well, I'm happy to say that we assist fed four animals. Two of them were double het for azanthic caramel albino mangroves. One of them was a caramel mangrove, and then, of course, this little Gemacincta. The good news is this little boy started eating on his own. Unfortunately, the other two were still assist feeding, but hey, that's great news. We're making progress, right? This thing is absolutely ridiculous. One of my favorite new snakes I've gotten in a long, long time, and I'm super happy that now it's eating on its own. Now we just gotta get these other three little buggers to get going and then we're off to the races. Hold on, I'm talking about the snakes that I got over at Scales and Tails of Ohio. This is that puffing snake and look at how awesome that display is with that puff. You know, that's what, obviously why they call them puffing snakes. They puff up that throat and it looks absolutely ridiculous. This is a big colubrid snake. I mean, it's gonna get seven, eight, maybe even nine foot eventually. This will definitely go over to the reptarium and it's gonna be a great great display animal. They get much more yellow when they get bigger. You can even get some that have nice reds on them. Uh, nevertheless, this thing is cool and it's doing great. So I'm super happy about that. I know it's boring. I do it all the time, but it's not boring to me, but I have to get my males in with female ball pythons. Again, this coming up week, we start breeding the rainbow boas, sand boas, and all of that type of stuff too. So uh, it's just the daily mundane stuff that I have to do. So I might as well bring you along on the journey. Back down to the basement here where we're kind of working away starting to put the floor in. So I basically have to put down this foam, then I have to start doing this all the way over. This entire room here will be filled. All the walls are painted now. So this flooring here will go all the way through here, all the way around here, all the way here, all the way over to there. And then there actually is gonna be a wall at the end where the podcast room is. Again, the podcast room is over here. So of course you're gonna be able to come into the podcast room. This will be walled off because this is gonna become part of the new Caledonia room. So we'll just have this hallway, this, then some molding, and then uh, let me give you the vision of this room, right? TV here, TV there. That way you can watch the podcast if you ever come down here with a guest or if we do the VIP thing or whatever the case is. We're gonna have a couch here, a popcorn machine there. We're gonna have a tabletop Pac-Man machine here. Over on this side, we're gonna have a couch. We're gonna have a big fish tank over here. And over here, there's just gonna be racks where we store the water for all the frogs and stuff like that. So that is what this basement's gonna look like. But for now, I gotta get the floor in. Once I get the floor in, I can start doing the trim and stuff like that. So. Uh, Oh, it's starting to take shape guys finally seems like I've been talking about this for months and finally we're getting some stuff accomplished
And that's it for the day, guys. We just got about half of it done, but you're starting to see the vision of what this actual will look like. Again, this flooring will go all the way through, through the control room, camera room, all the way around into the podcast room. Of course, there'll be trim and everything will look really pretty, but again, it's come a long way from that dirty, nasty basement from just a few days ago to where it's actually now looking like a room, and it's gonna be so cool down here. Uh, and hopefully, maybe we'll have some VIP experiences where you guys can watch the podcast down here with us. Uh, more about that later, but nevertheless, I'm happy with the progress for today. Hopefully tomorrow we can maybe finish this puppy off. You guys ready for another round of overrated or underrated? Let's go. Free handling venomous snakes. Ooh, I tell you, that's a tough one. Uh, I think it's, it's. I mean, listen, it's overrated. I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm not gonna beat people up per se for doing it, but do I think most people should do it? No. And unfortunately, the downside of what happens is when you see someone doing it, younger kids will sometimes think it's cool. I've seen a few kids that probably shouldn't be free handling, handling venomous snakes like some of their heroes have done. So uh, I, I, listen, you know, if you have the confidence and you're willing to take the, the penalty for a free handling, as an experienced keeper, I say you're all right, but uh, listen, I think uh, definitely overrated. Don't do it. All right, pet tubers. Pet tubers, uh, this is a tough one for me because of my history with pet tube. Uh, I'm not a pet tuber, I can promise you that. Don't ever call me a pet tuber. Uh, I think, you know, listen, I, I think it's, it's overrated because um, that community had an opportunity to do some really great things, some really positive things. And unfortunately, um, most of that community, not all the community, but most of that community went real negative towards everything. Really negative videos about how bad everything was and didn't use the platform to really help people, but more talk down towards people. So for me, uh, personal, overrated. Kevin McCurley. I think Kevin's underrated. I really do. I think Kevin is uh, is a hidden gem. Lots of people know Kevin from Nerd, but I still think that not enough people know Kevin from Nerd. Underrated, I think smartest guy in reptiles. I think personally smartest guy in reptiles. Uh, I look up to him as a mentor, so uh, definitely underrated. Breeding for investment. I think breeding for investment is probably overrated because um, not everyone can, not only can not everyone do it, but most people can't do it. So what ends up happening is when people invest, many people lose their money, right? Now I think that it's there's great opportunity and if you do it right, it's really good. Uh, the problem is, is most people don't do it right. They invest money too quickly without really having the experience slash everything else. And then ultimately they lose their money. I've seen, listen, I've been doing this for 33 years. I've seen more people lose money than make money in reptiles. So um, I, I'm gonna go overrated only because I think if you're gonna do it, do your research, make sure you know what you're doing, and be cautious. If you do it right, it can be amazing. Let me know what you guys think if I'm right about my overrated, underrated stuff, if you wanna see more of it down in the comments. So again, guys, if you can help me find the new animal for Petita's old cage, I'd appreciate a comment down below. I really do appreciate your help because I wanna find something that's gonna be really amazing that people are gonna be excited about to come to the Reptarium for. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit this playlist over here. Even if you just hit one video, it helps this channel so much. You can also subscribe to my podcast channel right over here. We talk about all kinds of cool stuff on this side, please hit that subscription button. Just barely over 30,000 and we hit 3 million. Turn your post notifications on while you're at it. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to somebody and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.